So we're here to talk through this checkered philomeno by Jonas Gleam. It's a case where the checkered rule is very, very forcing. And so one of the things to do right at the start is to recognize that any of these cells that have um, basically a, a forced separation between groups, those groups must be opposite colors, but consequently the, the things that happen right around them have to avoid bringing two different shapes with the same potential color together. So this two couldn't extend down or couldn't extend up because it would become uh, joined with the cell. It couldn't be a separate edge that where this and this are an edge, there's a necessary checkerboard type rule that these will want to be edges to keep these cells separate when the count is wrong. And so at this stage in the puzzle, we actually have you know, a fast start with a one and a two to the right that actually shades in um, all the cells adjacent to the two as being the other color. And you can then start to do deductions like this. Um, there are two cells here, but it's next to a group that has two in it already. So we have to take at least one more cell that now forms this group of at least size four. If it is size four, it's not taking the cell into it. So this is an edge. Once you make this edge, the cell on the opposite side of the edge is the opposite color. So this is an edge as well. This now has to take at least one more cell because it's got to be five or larger. It can't stay at size four if it's next to a group of size four. So let's look up here. This uh, circled cell can't stay at size one because it's next to a shaded cell of size one. So it's got to take at least one more. That now means these cells can't join up with a three. It would form a group too large. So the three is in the other color. And we again have a situation where we've got to grow this out. In particular, you'll see that this 20 has to come down. And once it comes down and touches this group, it's the opposite color. And so that space it as soon as you touch a, a another region, you have to invert the colors. And then around these regions, you often get this fully uh, checked pattern is the key step as we get started here. Um, having all of these cells marked around the three, these all must be uh, in the other color. The 20s come down, and so once we mark this, it actually joins with the group to the right. Um, this now, um, these three cells are, uh, I guess we'll call them white since we've been marking them effectively black and white or black and circled. This has to be the opposite color of these cells because it can't join with those cells. There are too many of them. So this too is dark, but it's not the same as this group above it. So this is in the other color. These two cells have to keep growing larger than the group above it. So they've got to take at least this cell. And that means that this two has to come down. Take this, that now marks these cells as circled. And in doing so actually says that the 20 um, this 20 is in the same color as this 20 in the upper left, although we can see at this point they're probably different groups. Um, I see 15 cells so far shaded above this line from this 20 region, and to come all the way over to these would take a total of six more cells. That's more than the 20 total would be 21. So we've got this as a starting point. When we've got two numbers that are the same color, like this 20 and 4, um, we know they've got to dodge each other, so we can shade any cell that's between those into the other color. That now leaves a group of size four next to the number four. That's no good, so it's got to take at least one more. This four has to come out. And uh, now we've got a situation where this four and that four can't come together. They're too far. You know, it would take a total of five cells for them to reach. But this four still needs to somehow fit into the grid. So imagine it didn't take this cell. Then it's going to have to come up, avoid the cell, and also come up again. And you'd form this L shape, but it would pin off this L shape, and you'd have a 4 next to a size 4. And that's now good. So this 4 has to extend to the right. That actually puts in this pattern where these dodge each other. But all that says is the two 4s are the same color. The opposite corners are black. And this 2 is the opposite color because of this edge. And it also is not the same as this one below because that would be too large a group if it did come down. So we've got um, something like this going on. This four comes to the left to finish itself out. This four comes down 
to finish itself out. This gets shaded, so we've got a hidden polyomino of size 6 up top. And I think that's a great start for now. The next place to probably make progress is down in this lower part of the grid, and we really don't know what colors these are. But there's going to be some deductions that deal with probably this big 20 clue and how it gets around this clue to fit into the grid. And the thing to think about with that is that if this 20 were a square, came all the way to the left, it would be touching this 4 clue, which is also a square in terms of whatever shade it is. And so that's not going to be allowed because you'd have two regions that have the same coloring. And so effectively, the 20 is going to have some of itself come up and out of the shoot and can then figure out what more to do in this grid. But let's see, how could we take as many as 20 cells and not connect with this group? We could take, you know, 6 here out to 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We really can't take more without this 20 coming over here. But um, for this to dodge this, um, it's going to stay shaded and it's going to have a pretty limited set of things to do, but we can only take as many as it looks like 18 before it's an issue. So for it to really get to 20, it's going to have to connect with this group. And so it, in my current view of the world, is going to be a white group, and clues that touch it will be the opposite color. And the question we should then ask ourselves I had missed coloring these in after this forest place, these cells have to be shaded. If this 20 is still going to continue to grow out, uh, it's going to have to come over through these cells in some way. And so this will have to be a 20, and this cell will have to be a 20. We actually don't know if it comes through the top or through the bottom or through both, and we don't know if it comes through the top or bottom of these cells or both, but these are, these are choke points that must be part of uh, being a white 20. Is this too white or not? If it's white, it can't come left, up, down, or right because it would put a circled cell next to other circled cells of different size. So it's indeed a group that's shaded. And that's going to force the cells around it to be marked like this. Um, we do still need to figure out a placement for um, these other groups, and a thing to think about is where really the interaction between the, the two and the four uh, to some extent is the, the thing to think about. And if uh, the four is also white, if it were circled, then because it's got a dodge, the 20s around it, it would force this cell to be shaded and this cell to be shaded and this overall group to grow too large. And so we talked about how digits that are one away from the same color have to be the sort of have a border between them of the opposite color that's not possible you can't make both of these black and so instead what's true is that this is uh, in this color and these cells dodge each other so these are both uh, white and they end up therefore both being 20s the two has to come up to complete itself so this gets into the grid. The four's got to come down and the minimum take the cell. But notice now as we color in the clues around the one that this and this need to dodge because there's not enough space for them. So the last cell of the four is a shaded cell in the corner. The 20's got to come this way to get out and still be white and the 2 then has one option left for it, so this 20 comes down and must merge with this. So that comes together pretty fast. This is one cell next to something of one cell, so it's got to grow larger. And this is a different number next to this number, so it's got to be the other color. And let's think about the counts we have in the grid. Got 5, 10, 15. So far we have 18 around this 20. So we'll pay attention to that as we think through the next steps. Um, one thing to come back to where we know this 20 and this 20 are different groups. This 20 still has to take five more cells. They'll all be white. Uh, two of them have to be these. You could take these three, but then whether you came this way or that way or took all of those three, these two are part of what's being taken. And that actually is going to 
isolate this uh, group, we said it had 18, so it's got to take two more. It could take this one, but it always takes this one. And when it takes this one, it can't take two more when it takes those. So it's going to look like this. We get a 1. This has to be shaded in, so that's 3. That's 1. This is a hidden 5. So far, so good. After we mark these edges, this is shaded. And that actually completes the group of size 5. These cells are now white around it. And now we come back to knowing we had to take five more cells coming down, including these two. Can it take another cell in white? Well, if so, then the shortest form even that takes these three would take four, five, six. That's too many. And so the only minimum way to take five is to take exactly the five that don't cross below this eighth most row. And so this is the completion of this large 20 group. And that means that the cells just off of it are the opposite shade. And this group of six has to take at least this cell and could take both of these or both of those. Let's consider this cell and let's look at what it could grow into. It actually can't be a four or a five. And it's actually interesting. If it took one more cell in white, it would take four total. And if it took two more cells in white, it would take five total. So those look both impossible based on the adjacent numbers. So this is a one and this is a shaded cell and it's got to take at least one more cell off of it because it's next to a one and so it actually connects up and finishes the six and that leaves behind a white two and another white two and we've gotten through this challenging puzzle uh, a lot of it was really taking consistent use of the checkered rule the two color rule and all of its consequences around a clue like this for instance forcing this clue out put some shaded cells in which have to keep growing they eventually form a region that's got to keep getting larger. This four gets pinned, this four gets pinned. We get some shaded cells here. Get a lot of the left of the grid in the center of the grid set. And then we don't have enough space to do anything but have this lower right 20 connect back with the center. And in doing so, we know that it has to be white, at least in my coloring the puzzle, because these cells were also white. And that makes this 20 black. It then has a tricky deduction to show that the four is also black. But setting this corner is the key deduction towards the end of the puzzle to work through. So if you got stuck, look back at how you thought about those options and where an option that, for instance, put a four here. Like there's a, there's a pattern you must avoid in a puzzle like this, is, which is to have a single polyomino like this see two different adjacent clues at the same time. And so that you always want to form edges that are more like this, where it's got both boundaries on, is more consistently the way that different clues uh, we'll look in a puzzle like this. So hope you learn a little bit about this variation and we'll see you again soon.